put a shirt on. I it didn't have one. I put one on. You know, that tropical weather for here. Yeah, we thought it was awesome. Okay. Okay, so Karen? Yes? Request from our Syrian, Fendorian, Archangel Michael. And Merlin. Merlin and Quan Lin. Oh. Quan Yin. Wait one second. Hold on a second. I have to do something. We're live on YouTube, but that's just because we uh, we wanted to give people a chance to to come in. So we have the Syrians, Fandorians, the Fandorians Archangel Quan Michael. Yin. Have we ever had um? How much? Okay, wait. everyone don't Merlin. just Merlin. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> the, right? The, the Christine, woman just wait. Know. Christine, wait, just wait. Everyone can't just start talking over everyone. So Syrians, Fandorians, Archangel Michael, Merlin, who else? Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin. Oh, I don't think we've ever had Kuan Yin. Have we? I've channeled her, but not online with you guys. Okay. All right. Who, Christine? Who did you want? Papa Chesset. She's the, she was the um, pharaoh of Egypt for the longest time. Can you type her name, please, in the chat? Because I don't know how to spell that. Papa Chesset. I know who that yeah. is. Yeah. Papa Chef. Papa Chesset. I don't. Papa Chesset. Chesset. It's hard to say. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Anyone else have one? Uh, Archangel and a nail. Okay. From Jonathan. Anyone else? Okay. Fear wants Grindel or to Kerr probably. Who Grindel you want or Kerr. Okay. I'm, I'm 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 supposing. Metatron. Somebody asked for. Okay, Metatron. All right. Who else? Who else? Who else? I don't. No more requests from this room. Okay. Any more requests in there in our room? If you, if you do have it, <clears throat> type it in the chat. Okay. So this is who I have so far, and I sorry I put Apple check, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> All right. So who was wants to do a blessing? Barbara. Barbara from here. Don, Don Barbara. Anyone else? Anyone want to do a blessing? Maggie's going to do one. Maggie. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Matei, did you want to do one? No. Well, well, since we only have Don in our room doing well, we'll start with him and then you can just go through your room. Okay, who's doing it from here? Barbara, uh, Maggie, Eva. Eva. Okay. Oh, Eva's there. Okay. So, okay, well, do Barbara, Maggie, Eva. All right, first Dawn. So, yeah. And then what, what I'll do is I'll start because we're actually live on YouTube now. So people, because people are coming into the, to the chat. And um, why don't you kind of give us an overview then when I say about, uh, about the, the workshop and how it's going and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to get started here. <laughs> All right. So hi, everyone, and welcome. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the something of August. <laughs> what is the date? 10. It's the 10th of August, 2019. And live, we are live. We aren't, but Jim is live coming to you from Rochester, New York, from the Ascension Workshop. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? Very well. And yourself? Yeah, very, very good. Very good, good for a Saturday or Sunday. I don't know what day it is. But for a Saturday, I think I'm okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> there is some confusion on your side. I have yeah. no clue what day it is. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So tell us what you're doing there. What is happening up there in Rochester? Actually, we're having a, I believe we're having a very nice workshop. What do you think? Yay! And uh, we're on day three of five. So uh, this afternoon we're going to be doing white magic. We already did the chakras. We already did uh, telepathy. We did uh, a bunch of stuff and there's been, um, it's a beautiful, it's, just a beautiful time. We created a vortex. Everything is really in uh, doing very well. A lot of peace and harmony and love here. Joy, 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 joy. joy. That's amazing. So, so, so you 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 done? Have you been doing channelings as well, or are you saving that for like now? Oh, I've been channeling from morning to night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yes. Awesome. Oh, Buddha came. Right. Buddha came in and taught the chakra class. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And then you're doing white magic today. And that'll be taught by Merlin or Merlin and Kurt Corkellen. Okay. So very nice. that'll be a nice, that'll be a fun class. Yeah. And you've got beautiful scenery, beautiful weather, everything. Absolutely. The scenery around here is awesome. And, um, the weather has been very nice as well. You couldn't ask for a nicer weekend, really. Really? Well, we're glad for you. And we're on the hilltop, so the sun shines in. We get a good view of the sunset. It's really nice. Ah, oh, great, great. Nice. I wish I could be there. All right. So why don't we get started? Uh, do you want me to introduce the people in the room? We can start with that, sure. But we can't um, see yeah. them. Right. We have Mark Zinzo, Raymond, Suzanne, Erica, Pat, Jenya, Matei from Slovenia. Oh, nice. Yeah. Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eva, Maggie, Fiona, Barb, and myself. And uh, nice. In our room, we have... We have a bunch of people. Let me see who all we have. We have Gabrielle, Randy, Christine, Reinhardt, Daniel, Lucia, Sheer, Jen, Jonathan, Tarek, and Lue, as well as myself, Karen, and Don. <laughs> Don's manning the YouTube chat. Yeah, we have a full house today. Very nice. So... Why don't we start with some blessings, and we'll start with Don. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Don. Wash at the Kasha to Rish to Umoy Kasata, Sato to Yok, the Boya Shatampo, Fatoya Kashtale, just do it again. Some at Toy Kashata, Katatayo to Yashinta, Boba Maya Kalu, Talai, Tari Kushu, Tapa, Tari Kata, Utana. There are many of us here sending out blessings to you, sending out welcomes to you as well. We do want to extend a hand so that you may come to us and that we may be friends and know each other in the mental sense and the heart sense. Oh, thank you. So for the people in your room, go ahead, Barbara. And then for Barbara, you guys, yeah. Barbara, Mandy, and... Uh -huh. Okay, no. Okay. They will be sitting off to my right here. Ah, uh, great. Okay. As we have studied many years the prophecies of the galaxy and the universe, we see that they are finally coming to pass and that they are finally coming to fruition. We are excited and glad to be alive at this time to see your people flourish and rise up. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nasukatiya sakiya tiya kaneya tapi kapi kanaha. 
Kusiata mia kasia kata ue a sana ma kasia ta lea kanu kata Ue ai a siata ma kasia ta Ukatia ta mai a tai sukai mai a tata We have come from a great distance Just to observe what is happening on your world And we are praying to God That he helps you in every way possible We see that there are, is turmoil on your world And it, it confuses us a bit but we know that all will be well because God has said it would be. Thank you. Pinyaki Talaj Alakash, Anya Bari Lainia, Pinya Malaha in Shapalaka. Not sure you heard that. No, no. <laughs> They're like, no, they did not hear that. Um, the light from a distant star is shining here today, bringing peace and order, love and fellowship. Please stand with us in this light. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Jim, you might want to change on your computer uh, so that your picture isn't trained on me. So what's on the screen is just not me, like looking over your shoulder for the whole webinar. Okay, I Maybe will have... I Maybe Mark can change it to you or so the people watching the video screen can see you and not just me do the thing. Hold on, he's fixing it. I'm not seeing the menu. I'm not. Don't it's up on the upper right corner. There's like those the little square boxes and then there's a little thing that gives you the Thank choice. You. Do you see it's. All right. It says we're on speaker view. No. Yeah. Isn't that what we want? Yeah, but she, she only wants, she doesn't want her on the, the back. screen. So just shift this to the, this way. <laughs> I like like big balloon animals or something in the back. <laughs> it's only giving the gallery and speaker view. Let me do this. I'm going to do this. What does it have now? Well, I have it. I have it for the. I have for the. There. How's that? No, she's no, she's talking about the image on this screen. No, she's talking about on the screen up there. She wants to get that out of it. I mean, it's up to you guys, but you know. Uh, just we'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> We love you, Karen. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, it's you there now, so it's awesome. Okay, very good. Yeah, so, well, I'm glad you're bringing a great uh, workshop, and we look forward to the channeling. Um, just to tell you who has been uh, requested, we have Archangel Michael, we have uh, the Syrians, the Fandorians, uh, Merlin, Kuan Yin, the word I can't say, Apat Pachek or something, the... Egyptian Pharaoh, female, uh, Archangel Anel, Takur, Metatron, and Hath Sput. Who's that? I have no idea. Christine? Who is that? That's the female, um, that's how you spell the female's uh, Pharaoh's name. Hath Sput? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Hath Sput. I don't know how you say it. Neither do I. Great. <laughs> Hopefully, if she comes through, she'll know how to say her own name. That would be help. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very helpful. All right. So, all right. Let's see who comes through. There's many waiting. It's been a it's a real very energetic um, day. We're doing this webinar from our very own vortex that we created. So, it, the energy here is really nice. So uh -huh. it's a Wonderful place, wonderful vortex. So um, we will see who comes through. Perfect.
Ah. Greetings. I am Kwang Yin. It is good to be here with you. How may I help you? What questions do you have? Well, thank you very much for being here, and it's a blessing to speak with you. Do you have a message first for us while we wait for questions? I am just so very happy to be able to help the people from this planet. I work with several of them on my own. But now is a time for great celebration, but also great work. You must take heed and do your work well. It is not an easy time, but you must put yourself into a place of great diligence. But if you do this, there will be great rewards as well. And these rewards will be of many forms. Rewards of the heart, rewards of material, rewards of the spirit, rewards of the mind, rewards of love and emotion. Remember, there is many ways to receive the beauty that God wants to give to you. Not just one or two ways, but many. Some very unforeseen until that time when you receive it. But those gifts and God's properties will be bestowed on his children for sure. And it is time for his children to rise up and bless his name and give him what is best. <coughs> Thank you. There was someone in the room that with you're in that requested you. Uh, yes. If they have a question, please step forward. There is a question. Come up here, please. Hello, Connie, and thank you for coming. You're welcome. Uh, as uh, human civilization develops and progresses, you would expect that uh, the feelings of uh, compassion uh, flourish and uh, spread out, but uh, I have a feeling that quite opposite is happening. How we as uh, light workers can reverse this situation? Believe it or not, the feelings of compassion, beauty, and love spread out of the world in a very strong way. They may not always be received by those that are unwilling to receive them or those that are not doing well for the earth. But all well wishes do come in through this realm. The negativity seems strong, but that is only a mask on a very fearful child. So let us work to remove it so we can see the real face of evil, which is nothing that God cannot handle. Thank you. Thank you. you are welcome. Question in the room. Yes. Greetings. Greetings. Thank you. Thank you. Kuni, I am very happy that no, you are. No. I am extremely happy that you are. We can't hear, please. She needs to get closer. Thank you. Kuni, I, I am extremely happy that you are here. You are the goddess of love and compassion, and I feel connected in my heart to you. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows you, so could you be so kind and tell us about yourself and your work on this planet and <laughs> share whatever you can share as that will be blessing to all of us. Thank you. Who I am is not really important, but what I stay may be. I am a spiritual person, 
from another realm, rated right from this time. But what I have to say is more than important than who I am. And I can let you know that who I am is in service of you, in service of God, and in service of the human condition. It is so nice of you to want to know my ins and outs and personality, but I will show you who I am more than explain to you who I am. I want you to feel that there is hope for your future because we are working for you, because we are here for you, because we can make a difference with you if you choose to do the work that is necessary. So who I am? Yes, I am someone from the past. <laughs> but I am also here in the present. And I am also here to explain the beauty and love that is waiting for you as you finish up your missions one day. Love and beauty and wholeness are what I represent. Peace and equality. Yes, all these things come under God's love and understanding. Therefore, call on me if you need me. If you wish a blessing, if you are low, I will lift you up. If you are needing a purpose, I will work with you until you find what it is that is your highest excitement for good and for God and for things unknown. Be with me now and share with me the peace and love that I am all about. Continue. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Does anyone else have a question? Uh, in our room, Christine has a question. Christine. In, blessed be. Um, I have um, a statue of you, which most of my statues of you have you riding a dragon on the crest of a wave. And um, you have 12 apostles or something below that. Um, why um, are you pictured often with a dragon? Did you work with the dragon energy when you were here? I work with all energies everywhere. But let me tell you why I ride the dragon. There are, the dragon has many meanings. It's a powerful beast. It's one that flies. It's one that travels. It has great honor and majesty. It has great energies. And I am friends with the dragon. And the dragon is strong. But with love, compassion, and peace, you may conquer the dragon's angry side. You may conquer the dragon's fire. You may conquer the dragon in a peaceful and loving way. And the dragon will be your servant. But you know, I am a servant of the dragon as well. Because the dragon needs help. The dragon needs love and peace just as anyone else. And so I am in service. To all. Thank yeah. you. 
continue. Is there any other questions in your room? Perhaps I should leave. There's no questions I do. Is there? No. Very well. I am just blessed to be among you. I am blessed to know you and to finally see more faces, more of the people that will be doing God's work and be feeling the peace and love herein. Be blessed. And goodbye. Thank you very much. Much love to you. Namaste. Thank you. Greetings, I am Metatron. Greetings, Metatron. I have come here by request. I am not sure by who, but there are many that want to speak to me, as I understand, and so I have arrived. Who can be the first to ask a question? Ah, in the room here. Yes, go ahead. Hello, Metatron. Greetings. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Jenny, and... I know who you are, yes. <laughs> I should have guessed. <laughs> yes, I know you. Um, I have this uh, concern, I would say, that uh, I uh, often ask you for help. Yes. But sometimes I have a reservation that it could be too trivial. Is are there occasions when I just should... Uh, no, listen carefully, everyone. There is no request too trivial, because if it is important to you, it is also important to us. And even if it's small, we can do small things easier than large things. But we can do large things as well. But remember this, our presence around you is not so special. Your presence is what is special. Your presence is what is rising up. Your presence is what's needed in this realm at this time. We have always been servants. We have always been here to serve. And so nothing is too small. Do not hesitate to ask. Good to know. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And I'm compelled to ask this question, which I'm not sure if uh, it should be addressed to you because it's um, in regard to the uh, uh, Indian symbol. Uh, it's a mandala, it's called Sri Yantra. It's a whole number of triangles intersecting. For some reason I have uh, that it's connecting to, connected to you in some degree. Absolutely. Well, there is a lot of symbols that have triangles in them connected to me because I have a sacred a uh, numeric system that is accredited to me. But the thing is about that, I made that because I wanted to organize my thoughts and, and organize how I go about doing things. And this macabre, or whatever you want to call it, in whatever shape that it, it forms into, the triangles are, very, are symbols of power. And they are symbols of lower energy, but this lower energy is being brought up through all these changes in the geometric shapes to come to a pinnacle, to rise up through. Do you understand? Yes. Just as mankind is rising up through many different difficult times, you will see that this takes many different shapes and angles, and that is because the angles and shapes must be there to address all the different needs and all the different energies that are coming your way. 
and are coming into into the way of mankind. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. So keep that with you because it is even stronger now than it has ever been before. And I'm sure you feel that. And it is also more meaningful because these shapes are actually working for you. Excellent. I guess uh, I have another question uh, about the shape. Um, this kind of a symbol um, came to me, and I wonder if there's any genetic uh, meaning or it's just my personal. It's something personal with you, but the top part of it, the the, the top part of this, the interlocking part down there is just you becoming one with this symbol. This symbol is a galactic symbol. It is of peace and harmony and goodwill because when some uh, races meet, they do the welcoming sign, but some do this sign. And that is of peace and goodwill. You have connected it somehow with yourself and done this with it, and that is your addition to peace and goodwill, which is your uh, connection to it. I understand. So, yes, this symbol here, not every species has enough fingers to do what you did. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is much easier for them, and this is what is of peace and, and goodwill. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, there's a question from Lucia. Lucia, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. Thank you for taking my question. I'm, I'm wondering about a couple of things. First of all, this coming, the last week with the Limesgate portal, I would like you to expand on the significance of it. And also um, that the week preceding the, the 8th of August, I would say my days were very calm, very peaceful, but then I would be woken up at night on a regular basis by whether bright lights, or even being pinched. It was the strangest thing. And my days are so calm and peaceful to have such, so much going on in the, uh, at night and waking up um, by bright lights where I thought I might be some sort of lightning bolt that got me out of bed, but then I would look and then it'd be peaceful outside too. So perhaps you could just expand on those two things. Thank you. Well, first of all, the time leading up to Lion's Gate was a peaceful time, but it's also a time when many beings would maybe pinch you or uh, wake you up because they just want to say, be aware, pay attention. This Lion's Gate is strong. This is one of the stronger ones that has ever been. And so you are, were to be noticing that the, this energy was coming and that this energy will make changes, not just very small changes, but very vast changes, long, distant changes. This will take years to unfold the energy that is being un released right now. That is significant. This workshop started on Lionsgate Day, and it is that the bright people have come together to join with the, this energy, I feel, in this vortex, actually. And the Lionsgate also is speaking to you and telling you that your energies for the next decade will be being entangled with the universe, entangled with Gaia, entangled with greater energies and greater understandings than you have ever had before. The energies of the earth are ripe for coming forth and teaching the world what they are and who they are in their own special way. 
and the energies coming in are right for connecting with these earth energies and melding with them and creating great and powerful feelings of love, devotion, peace, many other things. But it is a time that it's a jolt of power at the start, but that power is going out for decades. 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 That is extraordinary. It is. Do you understand the, the answer? I understand it very well. Thank you, Metatron. I, blessings to you. And blessings to you as well. Thank you. Um, Lue has a question. She says um, she was shown two magnificent golden eagles in a dream and they had something to tell her, but she can't remember. Can you help her remember what they wanted to say? The two eagles, were, the two golden eagles were representative of the angelic world. They are they have come down to give her a blessing for one thing, but to tell her not to worry. Everything is going to be all right. They came in a pair for the number two in multiples means you are on the right track. And that is what they are trying to tell her, that she is moving in the right direction. Do not worry. All things will be all right. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions in your room, but we don't have any on this side. An interesting low question day. Yes, everyone's in awe, I think. In awe? They're in I'm awe. not sure. But let me tell you this. Perhaps it's a day of messages. Hmm. Let me bring another message to you from the Lion's Gate. Perfect. That would be wonderful. As... The energy has entered this realm has the enter has the energy as the energy has entered this dimension there is a great change coming of course many will not see it or feel it because they are not looking for it or asking for it or know about it but they will feel it anyway in some way even the third dimensional people that are not trying to be aware of it will find that this energy is affecting them. Now, this energy will bring clarity to those that are awake. It will bring reason and understanding to those that are awake. It will bring a power of self to those who are awake. It will increase fourth dimensional energy for those who are awake. For those who are still not awake, it will give them a jolt. It will help them to feel a difference in the air. It will help them to understand that something is changing. It will give them the feeling of restlessness, of incompletion, of something is missing. And this is what is necessary for some to come around and ask the pertinent questions to themselves. What is it that I am missing? What is it that I need to make me whole? And the spirit is the answer to these questions. However, they don't know spirit, understand spirit, or even want to. But it will be almost impossible not to get to know him a little bit. Some may still reject him, but many 
will start to understand the purpose that they have in this world, in this life, in this lion's gate. And you know why it's called Lion's Gate? Because it is in the sign of Leo. The lion. Hear him roar. <laughs> it's funny that the Lion King just came out. And it's a symbol of the Lion's Gate. If you see the movie, you, and I have watched it because I, I found it rather profound that he lost his way and found it at the end. Not to give away the, the <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> see it anyway. But that... That is the way of the lion's gate at this time. Many have lost their ways. They had seen the light at one time. They have lost the light. And now they will find it again. And I, I see some of you going, I really hope that's true. <laughs> I really hope that's true. But it is true. Is there any questions now, Karen? Yes, there are. There's quite some coming from the YouTube. We couldn't get it up there for a second, so apologize to YouTube for the delay. But Sheer has a question in the meantime. Go ahead, Sheer. Greetings, Metatron. How are you? I'm as well as I can be. Did you like the original Lion Kings or the new one better? The original what? The original film oh, of the Lion, the King, or the new Lion King or the new one? To be honest, I didn't see them both. I only saw one. Mm -hmm. You should really see the, <laughs> the original one. The um, original one was a cartoon, I believe. Yes. I saw the, the second one. <laughs> um. I was wondering about the grand solar minimum. I know it was reduced significantly uh, during, I think, um, for uh, uh, some time now, I believe. Do you know if it's going to continue or is it going to get to the uh, usual amount? I think that the question is, the. Uh, if, if I know the future of the grand solar minimum. And I do know that it will last a bit longer. I do not know exactly when it will end, but I know that it still has work to do. I see. So is there <clears throat> somewhere in the future, is it going to be reduced completely or in a significant way and stay that way? It will not stay that way forever, no. Okay, thank you. Much love. You're, you're welcome. Much love. And, uh, give uh, God my regards. <laughs> love. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Oh, is there a question in your room? Or? Yes, there is. There is. Where? Okay. So, you're talking about the Lion King. I'm wondering how the whole animal kingdom. You can't hear. Again. I'm wondering um, the effects of ascension on the animal kingdom. Oh, a good question. Can you please repeat the, the question? Kingdom. Because we can't hear her. Now, I mean, you can repeat it, Metatron, if you would, please, before you answer it. Yes. That's her okay. question is, what is the effect of the animal kingdom? What is the effect of, of the ascension on the animal kingdom? And I thought that was a very interesting question. The animal kingdom is aware of the new energies always they are very sensitive to energy they know uh before an earthquake comes because they can hear hear and sense the rumblings even beforehand they know when storms are coming because they can hear and sense that before they come so of course they're going to be affected by all the energies that are coming in you will see 
a reaction from them. I'm not sure exactly how all of them will react. Some will be disturbed by it and others will be at peace by it, but you will see their reactions as time moves forward. The birds especially will be affected. Thank you. Uh, there's a question from uh, Leela in the chat, and she wants to know if you know this, will Native Americans be free and own land? There is, there is this possibility, yes, but not at this moment. But the thing is, all the things that were once taken away will be given back at some point. This is just how things happen. This is the way of the, the universe, maybe not of your world, but of the universe, that if something's been taken away and you have to suffer for it, then it will be returned and a hundredfold. Okay. All right. AJ has a question, says, uh, can you elaborate on the phenomena of deja vu? There are several different reasons for deja vu. One is that you are uh, ahead of yourself in time. You uh, have uh, been there already from a now moment, and you're re-experiencing that now moment again. There are those that have been shifted from timeline to timeline and have come back to their original timeline and have arrived back on their timeline slightly ahead of themselves and will feel and know that, that reality once again. But remember what, that a deja vu is an already lived moment. It's already been there. You've already felt it before. It's exactly the same as it was the first time you felt it. So in this sense, a deja vu is always something from the future coming back and repeating itself. Thank you. Um, you were talking a little bit about uh, numbers uh, earlier. And so uh, Lily Pad's asking, can you talk about the meaning of number three? It depends on what numerology you're looking at, but the galactic numerology with number three is that three is the one of the most powerful numbers. It's the numbers of the sides on the pyramids, which I use. The number three is very powerful to me. And it is the, the it's, if you build with threes, you get the many numbers that are very significant to the universe. And so uh, a grouping of three can be 12 and 12 equals three. So you have the repetition with this number that if you once have the power early, it will return on into itself and become a greater power. So building on threes builds greater power for the future. Thank you. Um, there's a question about the, the number 711. What, what, what does that mean together, 7 and 11? Well, 711 equals a 9, which is a final number for one thing. That, that is the end of a period, an end of a project, an end of a, uh, a session, whatever. But also, not, 7 is a holy number and it is a number of great meaning for those that have a belief system for it. In the, in the universe, seven is the divine number, the place of the first seven dimensions, the first seven creations, seven days, seven um, meaningful periods of existence with God, his creative essence was put into sevens, and the ones are beginnings. And so after all the creations, there will be two other new beginnings. 
That does not mean that this seven will be removed, not, not at all, but there will be more creations in nine realms instead of seven. Yeah. Nine understandings instead of seven. Nine of this and that. And he is already putting this into effect. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's a question from uh, Wendy, and she's saying, can you speak about your uh, connection to Enoch? Enoch never died. Are you aware of that? But yes, my connection to Enoch was close. We spoke many times. I was not in the angelic realm at that time, but I was someone in the universe that was considered, in your terminology, a creator being. So we, were, we spoke many times, and I know that his influence on your planet was great in some ways. His story has not been told uh, as exactly the way it was, but that is all right. Everything will come back for clarification at some point. We will all be clarified. Uh, I should say you will all be clarified in the points that are necessary for understanding and moving forward in your mission. These old thoughts and old understandings are going to pass away because new thoughts and new understandings always come. Remember, God does not stay stagnant. He is not the same um, as he was. He's more better and improved in his own eyes. He is greater in loving. He is greater in compassion, greater in diversity, greater in all things than he used to be because he has expanded and he has been around longer. When he was an infant, when he was first learning about who he was, which was beyond what you can understand in space and time, because there is no beginning and no end of energy, that there was a beginning of sentience. And that is what I am talking about. And he learned who he was, just as you are learning who you are. And he created you out of his own image so you could learn who you are in a similar way as he did, starting from nothing and growing into a dolphin. Now, as he has improved, he loves even greater, he gives even more. He's more compassionate, more loving, and more understanding than ever before. And now he wants his people to know him in a closer way. And so he's going to make that possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's also a question about from Wendy asking about, can you speak about the applications of light languages? Oh, of course. Light languages have many applications. First of all, the first application of light language, when you start to first learn it, is to pray for yourself. These light languages, you don't understand what you're, they are saying at least most of you. But when you speak them, they bring blessing, encouragement, joy to your being. Is it not true that after you speak your light language, you feel better, calmer, more beautiful, and more relaxed? That is because this language speaks for you in a way you cannot speak for yourself. It speaks to you in a prayer language that lifts you up and edifies you in a way that you do not know how to edify yourself. That's meaning number one. Meaning number two, when you speak light language in a group, it sends out that energy of prayer 
It sends out that energy of light to everyone so that the connection between you is brightened and strengthened. And it also brings blessings on you because the light language is also giving messages to some in the room or some that may be there. Sometimes it is interpreted and people will get a great understanding from it. Sometimes it's just there to edify and uplift those around because you, you can feel the energy of light language, can you not? Also, light language can be used to send healing to others, send energy to others that are not even present. It can be used as a missionary kind of position to go out and minister to people as they are not well, as they are in the world and need help, as they are in the world and need peace, love, and understanding. All these things light language can do. Now, also, many of these light languages are languages of other species and other peoples and angels. And when someday when these interpretations are going to start coming to you, you're going to be able to be ready for first contact and to be able to speak to some of the people that come, be able to speak directly to these new mm, friends. and be able to have them speak to you. So light language, like the lion's gate, stretches out a long way. A long way. This lion's gate is the most important energy that you've ever received. It will encourage your spiritual language. It will encourage channeling. It will encourage spiritual applications within your... It will encourage health. It will encourage you to be one together as a group. It will, it will bind you together with others who are working similar missions. because you all are bound together at, in the puzzle that is the ultimate mission anyway. Yeah. Each one of you is a piece of that puzzle, and each one of you matter. And if a piece is missing, eh, the puzzle is incomplete. Someone else has to step up and fill in that place. So do not lose your way. Do not be, make someone else fill in your piece of the puzzle. Because God will raise someone up if you fail. If you, if you stop, God will raise someone else up to be in, in that space. But let that continue. Let this energy continue. Because it will edify for a long distance of time. And it will bring you into a greater understanding of yourself. And, ooh, this is an important one. When you ground into the line gate energy, you will feel stronger. You will feel better. You will feel aware. Ground yourself and bring that energy with you. For it will open up the crown. It will open up all the chakras. It will build and edify. If you allow it to, but if you don't allow it to, it won't take liberties. But it will work with you 
if you wish it to. Yes, I'm glad I am here today to speak about that because it's really important that you understand how well and how much you can use this energy right now. And it's amazing that many of you are already using it, aren't you? I see nodding heads and I see smiles on the faces and grunts and moans. <laughs> Hopefully they were good. <laughs> Is there any more questions? Question. There is a question coming. Um, there's a question here from Randy. Oh, do you have a question in the room? Yes, yeah. we have one right here. Okay, Randy will be next after this person. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, we all know that we are affected by many energies. Also, Is that your note? Hello? Is it turned on? Yes. Yes, it is. It's Sorry, put it a little closer. Okay. Thanks. I'm, I sense that I'm somehow in greater connection with the planet of Uranus. And can you elaborate more on the energy that Uranus is having on the planet and humanity? What type of energy is it from your perspective? I see. Actually, all the planets are, are affected right now by the Lion's Gate as well. Because it is that we're in that space. It's not just the Earth. It's the space around this area. But Uranus has a... Um, they All the planets have their own special energies that they give. And Uranus is in a place of giving right now. And it is giving off the... It's a more of a truth kind of a, a vibe. It's... It's the honesty that will raise up from Uranus. That is what it's sending this direction. Many will have different thoughts about that. What? You should never have been called Uranus. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, how about we'll call it Uranus? Yes, I guess. <laughs> Well, the thing is, it's about truth and honesty and about awareness of that truth and honesty within your person. It's about you finding the truth about your, your, who you are in, in this realm. And, and it's speaking really strongly to you about that right now. Thank you. Um, is, there's another question here from Randy. Go ahead, Randy. She has to unmute. Yes, I'm unmuting now. Uh, I don't have any questions, but I want to say thank you to Metatron for all the help you have given me. It is my pleasure, my dear. I will help you at a hundred thousand times, and I will continue to be in your service. Thank you so much. And I want to tell you what the, um, the um, goddess, uh, you couldn't uh, pronounce the name, it's Hatshepsut. And, ah. uh, yes, and I was uh, her once many, many, many years ago. So I, I know her name. Excellent. Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. You are welcome, Mindy. Thank you. See, we knew we'd get the pronunciation. And, she, and you said, or Jim said, that uh, she would know how to pronounce her name. So if Randy's been her, of course she did. Of course. <laughs> that worked out just beautifully. Yes. Christine has a question. Go ahead. Yes, Metronon. Um, I have a problem with um, trying to wrestle with my heart and with uh, logic that when I send um, healing prayers to people, not animals, but people, I'm wondering if I'm interfering with their, um, with their purpose on this life. Like um, some people who have um, different types of diseases like Crohn's disease or um, diabetes or 
thing or things like this. I'm wondering, um, <laughs> should I be? Joe, oh, yes. Yeah. I, I don't know how really to heal when um, I don't know if I'm interfering. Am I interfering with their purpose? No. No, not at all. Prayer does not interfere with anything that is meant to be. If they are meant to be ill because it is part of their lesson in life, then your prayer will go into them as a peace and a comfort for this disease. It may not heal it, but it may help them feel comfort and help them understand what the mission, why they have it. The other thing is, is prayer will never interfere with anything. Uh, no one's mission, but it also other people will be healed by it. Other people will be uh, touched and healed by those prayers. So continue to send your prayers out as uh, many times as possible because um, they will only help to enlighten people or heal people. That is all that they do. They will not ever interfere with anything. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. There's a question right here in the room. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How does the intensity of the energy from the Lionsgate portal impact the resonant tone of earth at all? This is a two-part question. And what of impact or effect does the resonant tone of the planet, ours in particular, have on its inhabitants? What's the significance of it? The, she asked the, the lion, what the lion's gate energy, what significance it had on the resonant, resonant tone of the earth? Yes. And yeah, we, other planets. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Yes. C sharp or something. Well, the resonant tone of our planet will change because of the lion's gate, because it will it will pick up, it will become a higher resonant, higher resonation slightly. But it will not change the planet completely. That will come in the future. You see the resonant tone. Uh, will change slightly so that the missions of those that are using the energy will come forth in a greater way or come forth in the way that they should. Now, the resonant tone of the earth has always been in a, a certain field of resonation, and it will stay within that field of resonation, but it, but it will also resonate slightly higher because of this. But you see it uh, Terra Ha, the next, the next higher place in fourth dimension, it will not resonate in that, up to that height, but it will give us or you the resonance that you need to move forward and the resonance you need to enliven yourselves, where some of you might have not felt like you were moving forward very quickly. This will help to um, quicken you a, a little bit. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Safira has a question. Greetings. Hello, Metatron. I have two questions, please. One is concerning the Lion's Gate. There are so many different um, gates and portals and um, activations with eclipses and new moons and gates. So. I'm wondering with the lion's gate, is there a particular race that looks over it? Like how do we, do we just say mentally I connect to the lion's gate or is there a particular being angel race that we connect to? No, it's, a, it's a, actually an energy. It's an energy from the central sun. And that has finally re, re arrived here in, in some ways. That's how some may put it. But it is not a person or a thing. Uh, uh, it is, it's not a person or a race or a species or a particular person you can look to. It is an energy. It is from 
uh, God. It is from a, a far place. And if you want to become part of it, just uh, close your eyes and ground yourself into it. And you will feel it. You'll feel a resonation. You'll feel the, a different tone within yourself because it is a very powerful time. So you don't have to call on anyone. It's already here. Okay, thank you. I understood it wasn't a person or a race, but I thought... There are some beings who oversee certain activities, is what I was there saying. Are, this, the um, Pleiadians are overseeing the ascension, but you don't have to call on them to receive this. Mm, okay, thank you. And my second question, forgive me, it's a, it's a little bit of the personal side, but there are two people who were not, who got stopped from attending this particular workshop. And I was one of them and I feel like I've been hit by a train emotionally, physically, it's really bad. So I don't know, did, did something happen like some attack or is it just, just were we meant to be there or not meant to be there? <laughs> and that's why we're not there. I'm trying to figure it out. Well, I am not, the, I am not a judge or any of that, anything like that. I just know that sometimes the energies do not permit people to move through certain other kinds of energies. I see that the, this is an ener was an energetic change and something in the energies stopped you. So this is just telling me that the traveling might have been too dangerous. There might have been, um, it's a warning that something might have happened on your trip to this place. That is the only thing that I see. It's not that you didn't belong here or uh, any of those things, or it wasn't that you didn't belong with this group of people. It was that this was not your time for it because they wanted to keep you safe for another time. Thank you. Yes, they were, they were um, dangerous in the air. <laughs> they were severe thorns. Yes. Well, then they were just keeping you safe at this time. Okay. Can you please send me and the other gentlemen some energy, please? Because I feel Absolutely. really, really thank like hit by a train that I'm not there. I, I don't know how to explain that, but thank you very much. You're yeah. welcome. And I understand that the ramifications of not being in the group that you really wanted to be in can be disturbing. And that is sad. And I know the group's heart goes out to you and to the other person that was not able to be here as well. Yes, that thank you. That was who? Johnny. Mm -hmm. And we send prayers to both you and Johnny. And they are thank praying you. for you right now. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. And Johnny, get well. And Johnny. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question from Ecclesiast888. He said, did the blueprint design, excuse me, one second. Sorry, I have, I have a rambunctious dog here. Did I the think he had a question. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He wants to know if the blueprint design of the human vessel, which is a magnificent creation, uh, was shared with beings of Sirius A, and the brain was tweaked by the Anunnaki, or is it the other way around? Thank you. Well, several things happened. It, it wasn't that simple, actually. There was a lot of manipulation with DNA, with the Anunnaki, uh, some with Sirius, some with uh, even other species. But the, the greatest portion of the answer to that question was that the Anunnaki was the ones that brought the human form exactly to the way it is now. The brain portion they did enhance, but others had their portion to enhance the brain as well. There's many things. There's not a very simple answer to that. We have a question here. Is that all right? Yeah, please go ahead. Very well. 
with that thought process. Um, are you saying that the Neanderthals were a very simple-minded and they created it as greater, or was that just uh, wrong information in the books? Um, the Neanderthal was one of the subjects to their experimentation, and they did skip it along to a higher level of intellect and change the physical form to some extent. It was one of the main um, main subjects, but not the only. Question. Is there a question there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. An add on. Um, so it sounds like we're talking about the missing link. Yes, and there will it will always be missing. And the Lyrans had a role in this. The who? The Lyrans. The Lyrans, not so much. A little bit, maybe afterwards, mm -hmm. but not before. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, we do have some more questions from the chat. Um, yes. AJ wanted to know, he said, uh, what do you do when you, because you were talking about numbers, what do you do when you see the, consistently see the number 1111 or numbers of that nature? It's, um, it can be very, very good or it could be very, very negative. <laughs> Depending on your frame of thought and frame of, references it can be new beginnings it can be uh new understandings a change of format a change of 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 uh venues all kinds of things of that nature or it can and that can be very positive or negative uh i would like to discuss it with him personally where when he saw it what what he's doing there's many, the, num, the numerology system isn't just black and white. It works with the individual and it works with the situations that they're in. But I, in my impression of this 1111, so there's some great changes going on right now within his realm and, and he's uh, actually not sure how to deal with them. Okay, so please get in touch with, uh, make an appointment with Jim and talk to Metatron. You can do that on the hucolo.org website. Yes, there's many meetings for these number sequences from the galactic level, from the universal level. From the human level, you've taken your numerology system from ancient days, and you have to actually update it. Because just like the buildings, the megalithic stone buildings, uh, the pyramids and the and uh, Machu Picchu and many of the other ones, they all face Orion 2,400 years ago or, or 3,000 years ago. They don't face Orion anymore. So that has to be updated. But you see, as the star systems, as the vision of the sky changes, so does your new, numerology numerology system change. So does your, um, what is it? Your, uh, this, your astrology systems change. Yes, so they, these all things change with the movement of the sky, with the movement of the planet, with the, with the movement of distance, and things of that nature. So you have to reevaluate that every couple hundred years and do a new, new numerology, new astrology, to update it to, to face the sky the way that it is now and not the way it was 1,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago or 500 years ago even. So you do have to update these numerologies and your astrologies to make sense for this day and age. There is somebody that's going to be doing that, isn't there? There will be someone that will do that, yes. Great, thank you. There's also a, a question. I have some more questions, um, one moment. Very well. Lily Pad is saying her friend uh, needs help. Uh, he needs, named Richard, he's asking for some healing. Um, 
I will have the people in this room send out healing energy right now to that person. Okay. And what was the name, Richard? Richard, his foot won't heal. Ah, his foot won't heal. Send energy to Richard's foot. And they are doing that now. Thank you. Okay, there's also a question from, uh, let's see, from Cami. Oh, oh, wait a minute. No, that's not a question. It's a comment. Oh, questions, Cami. Okay, she's saying, I just can't understand how Metatron can interact with innumerable entities concurrently, but he must. Uh, oh, I don't, Cami. That's not a question, sweetie. But can you explain how you? Um, Interact with innumerable, innumerable entities concurrently? I guess that's the question. When you are in a, a, a certain kind of spatial, uh, as a creator being, let's put it this way. When you take up a lot of space in time, <laughs> when you are larger than, than people can imagine. I guess I need some more space. There are many sides to uh, the thought processes when it comes to beings such as myself uh, and angels and God and others that can interact with several people at once. And it is not a trick and it's not something that's impossible. It is something that is intriguing and it's something that I am happy that I can do. <clears throat> trying to explain it to you, I think that's sort of impossible. Okay. I understand. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to make it sound right. It's just, there are numerous points of, of energy that are interactive with different places. In the, that interactive energy, there is also the thought process that goes with it. My brain is not in just one place, but can interact in many places. So when these points touch and interact with other points, then they can communicate. How's that? Is that better? You're gone. Oh, sorry. There's another question. There's a question from Heather. She said, um, can you get advice on healing pain and autoimmune disease, fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is an example. I see. Um, the immune system is something that can be fortified. Um, this, the, the immune system starts to go when people lose faith in certain ideas and thoughts and, and different things. Sometimes, um, autoimmune deficiencies come from a lack of faith in something that they once had faith in. And if you restore that faith or understand it better instead of just letting it go, I think that um, some research needs to be done into what belief system or what thing you stopped believing in that is causing the, auto, the immune system to, to fail. Because many times it is centered or grounded in belief. There are other things that can be a part of that as well. But um, it is something that is, it is curable. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question from Peter. He's saying, what is the spiritual meaning of Indian headdress? For example, if it shows in one's dream or appears in one's aura. A headdress in someone's dream gives them a power or a leadership position. It also, depending on the headdress and the, the place, it tells them what past life they have been with the Native American people. So, because the headdresses are different in different parts 
of the United States and Canada, and even some in, in, New Me in Mexico. But you see, headdresses were only uh, worn in certain areas also. So, uh, but it, it is a sign of leadership. It is, a, it is a sign that you are taking control of something. It's a sign that uh, there's a positive feeling uh, or a positive movement in a direction that you're really looking uh, forward to. Your higher excitement is involved with this. So um, I think that's about all that I can say about it, not knowing the, the person. Thank you. Um, there's a, um, let's see this. Uh, there's a question from Sheer. Hey, my friend, how are you? I am well, and yourself? I'm good. Um, I think I'm, I might have asked you that before, but are you reincarnated here at this time as a human or having your aspects here? No, I have aspects there, but I am not reincarnated on your planet, no. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I do have um, aspects of myself there, and some people will identify with and identify themselves as Metatron or their, as their, their higher selves as Metatron. And that is fine because that can be an aspect. But I am not fully in, in the human body. Thank you. Um, there's a question from uh, Paul. He's asking if you can send some healing to him. He was poisoned and he can't sleep for 570 days now since February 5th. That is a long, long time. One moment. That's not even 570 days, he said? Yeah, he said he was poisoned by the government and he can't sleep. Yeah, that's over a year. That's, yeah, a year and a half ago. Mm. Okay. Let me think about that. One moment, please. All right. We'll send energy to that. That's I can do that. Okay. Also, Joseph is asking if anybody can help with physical energy. He's been working on a diet, et cetera, for like two years. Very well. We can send energy for that. And Paul is saying he swears since like February 3rd. He hasn't slept. He swears. All right. I, I believe him. <laughs> okay. I believe him, but that was a year and a half ago. Right? Yeah. Understood. That's quite a long time not to be able to sleep. Right. I, I, I have questions about the poisoning. So I, would, I need to know, you know some of these things you need more information, but that's all right. I'll look into him and see what's going on. Okay. I actually think I've run out of questions. We have some here. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello. Um. Recently, for the last month, uh, my dog has been being attacked, I believe, by entities in my home, and I was wondering why I was not able to remove them, why they kept returning, despite my efforts, and um, if you knew any ways that we can better protect our loved ones in our homes from influences like this. Can you right. please repeat your question? We couldn't hear her. Oh, uh, they couldn't hear it? No. Um, she, her dog is being attacked in the home, and she's done a lot of things to try to remove the entities that are attacking the dog, but she doesn't, see, they seem to be all coming back. She wanted to know if there's any better protection that she can find for her home and her family against these uh, intruders. So, and my answer is this. Yes, the reason for the attack is because they're trying to distract you. They're trying to put you in another um, a thought process. And they're sadly using your pet to do so. Yes, we can uh, get you better protection and stop those attacks from happening. So uh, the thing is, the seventh dimensional beings that are around the earth uh, have to be notified of that. And now they are. So they will come and uh, cover your house with is there anything personally that I can do to put up better protection? Um, you can probably, you can put your 
a dog or cat in a bubble, a, a bubble of light, and that would help. But the seventh dimensional beings will be there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now I think I am out of questions. All right. Is it crazy? <laughs> We're out of questions. All right, we are out of questions here as well. Aww. So I would let someone else come. Thank you so very much. Oh, a blessing? Yes. Oh, all right. Very well. Tira shansuta ara ai sirisi ira. Arunai kari aponju. Shuji ataka la tandi kari abandu ur. Ishim dietu kanote for ocean do. Mokawata asaviti in the dieta. Card kishivajan. Takitura inventu early. Friendly barrier to she. Sujvrinda, Tati Rati or the Kur. Pacham, Jaron the Bow. Ototora, Sikitinina Angaba Ah. Urishin the SMG. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, can I just share one more thing with you before you go? Of course. Paul was talking about not being able to sleep, and he said he had an incident with a policeman who gave him, I'm not going to repeat it, I'll let him, he, he was, well, he was given haloperdol, uh, decanate, valpolic acid, benzotropine. Um, he was grabbed by a policeman and at his job and told he should have been stayed quiet. He was in two weeks in the hospital and this was on February 3rd, 2018. They Amen. said that it would be 11 days till he had a heart attack or a stroke. But uh, that's what he's been waiting on. That seems, yes, that's very, uh, that sounds very brutal. Yeah. All right. We will send some energy to him. I will look in personally to that, to that particular okay. scenario. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mitch Chan, thank you very much for coming, and it's been an honor to speak with you. Much love, and many blessings to you all. May the energy of the lion's gate be with you. Keep it in mind. Don't forget that it's there. Use it. All right, I'm going to go. Much love to you. Three things you did not expect us. Who are we speaking with, please? Welcome. The Assyrians. Oh, the Syrians. The Assyrians. Welcome. Yes. 
what is protection over you giving? There is one giving protection, not necessary. Mm -hmm. right. We have a message for you. We want you to know that we are here for the first time around your planet. We are studying. Well, thank you. Come on, said welcome. And I heard it in some minds. Thank you. We're here studying your people and your situation. It's unique in all of the universe. There are many things that we need to know. And we're curious. We want to know why there is so much violence on this place. I mean, it does not seem to be in the, the uh, shape of a war, but very much violence still among you. Many shootings, many violences. What causes this? Can you explain? Lack of compassion. Disconnection from the heart. Disconnection from the heart. Hmm. Domination structures. Domination structures. Greed. Greed. Interesting. Does that enhance violence or the action of violence? The action of violence. Um, Shown through the internet and television. Uh, encouraged. Are you are you a, a group, a collective? Do you go by a certain name or are you an individual? The Ethereans. The Ethereans. I'm sorry, I missed that. Would it be possible if someone could adjust the mic so that we can hear? Because with the Ethereans moving Jim's head, we're missing most of the talking. Thank you. Oh, I am sorry you are not hearing me. Is this better? Yes, I'm sorry to restrict your movement, but it's just a little bit hard to hear when you move Jim's head around. It's hard to discover when you cannot look. <laughs> I understand. You can use the hand that you have the control of to also hold the mic a little closer to your mouth. It's a built-in mic. Not necessary. I will stay still. Do you have questions for me while I move my eyes? <laughs> Again, we appreciate you conforming to the restrictions of our sound equipment. If anyone who, if anyone has a question, please, in the room can ask, or in my room, if you do, please type it. We have one in the room. There is a question here. A human is sitting beside me. Human, speak up, please. Hello, everyone. Closer. The Ethereum. Closer to your mouth, please. I wanted to find out what part of the galaxy are you located in, and what is your specialty in terms of uh, as a group, or as a group, in terms of what you do? Can you hear her? Not at all. If you would repeat the question, we would be grateful as you answer it. Why don't you speak in this microphone? No, it's the computer. Speak into this. Computer. Speak into this. I wanted to find out if there's a way in knowing how, where you all came from, and what part of the galaxy. What is the specialty that you all um, do as a group? And where is the data going to that you're capturing from here? Very inquisitive. Thank you. Thank you. We are from not this galaxy. This galaxy is older than our galaxy in some ways. However, the people developed in our galaxy a little faster. Can you still hear me? 
perfectly. Thank you. Our agenda is scientific study, understanding, developing new thought processes for other species. We are here to understand you. We don't want to be your friend yet, but maybe someday. Our thought process on what is happening in your world is confusing to us. We realized that we had a similar kind of past, but not quite as integrated. Our population seems to be much more even in races than yours. We only have a couple. You have multiple. In fact, you have many, many different races on your world. The DNA is astounding. I'm sorry, I'm moving my head again. <laughs> it's not that severe. You can move it just a little. <laughs> it's only when you are looking around. So I think you're making it. Right. You're very funny for a for an extraterrestrial race. How oh, funny. <laughs> Hilarious. Go ahead. I am not funny. I beg to differ, but please continue. <laughs> I do not know this face, so the, <laughs> the expressions come with the interaction with the human. That's all right. You may laugh. All right. Thank you. Uh, Lucia has a question if you're ready for questions. Once again, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, greetings. My question is, since you, you are coming in without being requested, what attracted you to this group today? Thank you. Perhaps we thought you were funny. <laughs> <laughs> Is there I a message especially? actually true. We did find you a bit amusing. So we did come because we were able. And now we are the amusement. It's all right. That's Is there something you'd like to share with us about yourselves? We have come from very far away. We are here to do scientific work, understand your sensibilities and your means of advancement. We are told that you are on the brink of evolution. We find that hard to believe, but it is something that we were told. And within 200 years, you will have gained telepathy. I see that part of those species will do this, and some will not. There's someone sitting here. <laughs> Are you asking a question? Yes, I'd like to. Yes, I'd like to. Thank Talk you. Talk in there. Yes. It's. Uh, it's related to what you were just talking about. And thank you so much for coming in. Welcome. Thank you. I was wondering out of the millions of stars and planets in this galaxy, were you in this sector necessarily? And, and there was something that made Earth or Terra stand out for you or I'm just curious how you came to now study our planet out of all of the space that you could have been in and could have been studying at this the, time now. There has been news of you for many years now and we have decided that it was time that we came and see what the news is all about. 
And so, as we are here now, and learning about you, we are just beginning to learn. There will be a lot of study before we know who you really are. We will dissect your DNA, but we are not going to harm anyone. We take our DNA very easily from you by permission. I, I don't mean any disrespect, and I hope you don't think we're making fun of you, and, and I'm just making little jokes with you, but I really am going to ask you not to move your head around. I am sorry. It is That's a no problem. I understand. So, <laughs> okay. There is another human here. Okay, that human should ask a question then. And lean to the mic and talk up, please. I hope you don't, wow. feel, threat I hope you don't feel threatened with human next to you. Uh, anyway, I am for some reason really delighted that you are here and I want to tell you that I am also really fascinated by humans and studying them myself very closely. And what being, species are you from? Well, I'm Pandorian and Arcturian, but right now human. Ah, yes, you don't look either Pandorian or Arcturian. Yes, I'm human right now. But I find humans absolutely fascinating because they do things which are quite unexpected. And there is example coming. Um, on one hand, they uh, gather and eat animals. And then on the other, they find an injured animal and save sometimes life to save it. It makes no Very sense. Very confusing. But, yes, but it's happening all the time. They, they eat the animals they want to save. No, they they do opposite things. They sometimes eat animals, and then they save animals risking their own lives. They do things like that. It's fascinating. Trust me, it's fascinating. We will they learn. Also, they also can love, and the sex here can be pretty amazing. So altogether, it is a very interesting place. Oh. Yes. Thank you for this information. Thank you. <laughs> we will study it. Um, there's a question re requesting if you have an individual name. Yes, I have an individual name. W would you share it with us? It cannot be pronounced by your people. Okay. But I will say it anyway. Thank you for that. And Safira would like to know, what dimension are you in and what do you look like? Do you have physical body? We do have physical body. We are from what you call six dimension. I'm sorry, I'm moving my head. It's no problem. Could you describe your physical body, what it would look like? Can you give us uh, an answer? We are bigger than you are. By how much? Let me interpret your measuring system. We are seven foot. Three inches. One second, please. One second, please. Someone needs to be muted, and I don't know who that is on my side. Seven foot three yeah. inches to seven foot ten inches. Okay. Wow. Good. Also, we have more multiple eyes. You only have two. We are bifetal. I am trying to interpret how to say these things. Do you have do you have five fingers and toes or fingers and toes? Ah, phalanges and yes. 
would be correct. Are your eyes stacked like like ours, but are, are they are they next to each other? You said you have four eyes. No, I said multiple eyes. Multiple eyes, excuse me. And how, where are they all? We have five. Okay. Our planet is very dark. We need to see. Okay. Are they all on the front of your your head or on or some or are they on the sides as well in the back two are on sides three are in front and do you have like a third eye like a are they are they straight across or in the triangle triangular formation triangle triangle formation yes thank you thank you um there is a question from uh don if if you would take it I will take it. You have questions. Yes, I can go first. Yes, there is someone also here. Okay, go with Don and then we'll go back to your room. Blessings, welcome. I removed the protection that I placed on that individual. I'm a watcher. Okay, and just welcome to Planet Gaia. Thank you, watcher. Much love. You are welcome, Watcher. I would also say that uh, perhaps in the, at the top of the next hour, I will be in a light language gathering if you'd like to join us. <coughs> yes, if that is acceptable. It is acceptable with me. Thank you. Great. Ah. I will, you will hear my call. Yes. Thank you. Blessings. Go ahead, Mark. I was intrigued by your curiosity around the violence on this planet. It has been a mystery for me, and I've heard many theories as to the reasons. Some believe it is intrinsic in our nature. Uh, others say it is part of our social structure where uh, at the big due to the hierarchy, those in power discourage people from trusting themselves and their own feelings and thus they disassociate from their self-awareness that would allow them to make better decisions. I would be very grateful if you could share your perspective on it, if you learn more about it. Chaos divided by 937 plus um, de deterioration of social classes, plus then there is the mod modification of emotional statuses along the lines of each different species and race developments. We are here to nullify 0% gravity. Uh, input also. We wonder if uh, emulsified air would be changing. Wrong word, wrong word. But we're creating an algorithm for your society. When you speak of the air, is it possible that some of the toxins we put into our environment, uh, such as lead, uh, we believe lead has contributed to the violence. We are, yes, we are thinking that some of the toxins in your air as you, or atmosphere are contributing to behavioral patterns. And we are wondering if this will affect even those of higher status of evolution. With those with higher fourth dimensional energy will succumb to these lower vibrational uh, toxins and materials. We also wonder if the thought process is being transferred from your televisions and radios will affect and deteriorate thought processes and mission accomplishments and goals. 
Yes, we wonder that ourselves. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Safira. Hello. Um, thank you for coming and I apologize on our behalf for technical aspects that we um, we seem to need to restrict you in any way. I am, I am sorry. Apology is not ex necessary. Thank you. I also I want to, to... I have to interact within the parameters of the species that I am involved with. Yes, normally though we do have better, a better technical system. Um, so I wanted to ask you, please, uh, exactly what you are studying scientifically on this planet, if I may. Mostly the psychological patterns and developments of your people. We have looked at some of the past information, but must delve into it a little deeper before we can make a final analysis of where your species is headed. We are told that it is headed for evolutionary uh, advancement. However, with the different information that we have gathered, it would seem unlikely. So are you, are there many of you who have study, are studying a certain percentage of humans from different races? Or are you studying a specific group of people? Are there many We're of you? We're studying your planet as a whole. A group of people would not be sufficient to give an analysis of a planned situation. We must look at all areas and define what is happening and how it is spreading or not spreading, or if it is uh, expanding or if it's decreasing. There are many things on your world that are very curious to us. And the beauty of the planet is spectacular in some ways. It has not been eroded as, as far as some planets have that have advanced civilizations, but you are considered a moderately advanced but not completely astute civilization when it comes to, I'm sorry, I'm moving my head, okay. technologies. Yes, uh, well I didn't mean just one specific group, I meant like from each race, from each area of the planet. Do you have many people, many of your people here um, for this purpose? We don't have any people on the planet. Or around the planet or it's gotta we be- We are just arriving. We are starting our study. Ah, uh, okay. And what is, what will you do once you've come to some conclusions? Is it just curiosity or what will you do with your conclusions? will be documented for our species to read about and for many in the universe as well. We have an area of readership, that's what you would call it, but they, were, they also listen and watch. But we will decide after a time. There is much information to gather. Mm. Thank you. I wish you... Um all the best on your on your investigations. And I hope you do find enough positivity to understand why we are able to be in that position to move to another um, dimension. Thank you. Yes, very well. Thank you. We've reached the top of the hour. Um, we've had a lot of questions. We have a lot more, but if but I know understand you have to get back to your workshops. Uh, are you are you ready to leave us or do you want to stay for a little bit longer? We must move forward. Okay. Move forward. All right. We spoke to you. We've learned what we need to know from this particular scenario. Very curious. Enlightening. Well, we are always welcome. We're here every Saturday. I don't know what that means in your times, but just... In seven of Earth days, we will be back here again. So you're welcome at any time. Every seven Earth days, you can come back to us. If Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Hello. 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 Welcome back. Thank you. How did you have this Syrian feel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a very unusual feeling because he was actually it felt like he was filming every day. He was like actually uh, and there, it looks like there was like little magnifying glasses coming and zooming into and telescopes and I don't know. It was weird. Interesting. Oh, Interesting. that's what it is. <laughs> uh, you, we right. were probably like on the Truman Show. We were probably on their TV. The Truman Show, yes. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. It, uh, that was a very weird experience. It, it seemed like there was like he was zooming in and zooming out and uh, using mag magnifying glasses to, to look at certain things and uh, telescopes to look way back there. And um, his, he was always looking at something different. And it, it, it was very interesting. Mm, he wasn't so pleased that he couldn't move his head. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he wanted to, he definitely wanted to move his head. Definitely. Yeah. And like, like he lost... He lost the control and started moving his head again. You were going, I really have to ask you to stop moving. <laughs> and he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he was like, okay. But, Sorry, I put the kibosh on his exploratory mission. Sorry about that. But he got everything he wanted, I think. That's good. <laughs> I don't want to get a bad name in the galaxy for like stopping exploratory missions. <laughs> I mean, for him to stop in here for his exploratory mission was like a little weird. Yeah, it's awesome. But yeah, this was an experience that he couldn't have anywhere else. So there you go. I think that's why. In mm. general. Mm. Yeah, in general, she was doing protection, and he felt the energy and was like, like wondering why you were doing that. Yeah, but I was doing it for Yeah, and she, he was like uh, protecting. He was like, you don't need to protect yourself for me. I'm not dangerous. <laughs> Very cool. So, so Jim, so what's, uh, what's up for the rest of your day today? What do you all well, do? Well, we have the white magic class this afternoon. Okay. And uh, we have probably bonfire, bonfire. lunch and bonfire. And, yes, we had a bonfire last night. It was nice. Did George Carlin come through or not? Uh, no, Grindle and, uh, Orion. And, uh, and Orion. Well, I request George Carlin. Some point, somebody's got a video for me. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh! Did you hear hear the other George Carlin? I loved it. Yeah. If anybody wants to see the best channeling of George Carlin, look up George Carlin channeled by Jim. I, I you, my dog knows, but it was, it was so George Carlin. I mean, the the humor. It was so witty and quick. It was really good. It was so good. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we just actually somebody meant we had been discussing that earlier uh, yesterday because George Carlin was one of the things everybody remembered. So yeah, it was so good, so really good. Yeah, yeah. it was like, oh yeah, George Carlin. <laughs> he hasn't lost it. Let me tell you, no, he hasn't lost it. No, he hasn't. Oh. Yeah. So, so but anyway. we, we wish you a wonderful, wonderful rest of your uh, ascension workshop. And if you'd like to give a blessing, if there's anyone who wants to give a blessing, we'll keep it short. Why don't we just take a, a blessing from Lucia in this room and one from your room because we're a little bit over the hour. So we'll just. Okay, do go ahead, Lucia. Well, first of all, just a shout out to Jim and Angie. And I'm, uh, I'm there in spirit with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Anona Kalasha Sini Kalasha Soki Asha Sonaka. Asini akili kasho soniki ashisi la kadashi sano akasakosiki akasha sonini ashasi ala kashi siki ashasana akoshisi namaste yes and that said
As you can see, the universe is curious about you, and we are have been curious about you for a long time. We do love you, and, and we are friends with you in spirit, and we can hardly wait to meet you in person. And the Angie's going to do the uh, blessing from here. With a loud voice, please. To ui si si ti aka ani, o to ku ui si sha. Ia uwe ia si si ani ia to ku ui ia a. Sha shonu u to ku ui ia ani ia to ku ui sa sa. Ia sa ku ku ui ni a to ka ai. Si sha si goni yo ko to u ana ia to ka sana na ku tua. Let the energy of Sirius be with you and the lion, and let it all embark on your missions with you. Let you know that we are all specifying our desires for you to succeed and to move forward in the ethereal as well as the galactical. And you are ones that are of great interest to us. So make sure that you exceedingly try to create a positive existence for the future and allow yourself to survive. Ooh. You're muted. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so they could see me on the back screen again, so I can't do it. <laughs> ah. yeah. Well, much love to you. Thank you again. Have a wonderful time. Much love to everyone. Thank you for everyone in the YouTube chat. Any questions that we didn't get to, save them for next week or for two weeks when Jim is back and we'll take them then. So. All right, thank you. Much love to everybody. Say so goodbye, workshop. Bye-bye. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this. Joy, joy. Joy, joy. <laughs>